Hi there, it's Kevin with the Rogue Market here with a top 10 video that we usually do for the Market Monday recap. However, I did not have a Market Monday this week, been feeling a little bit under the weather, as well as just a, a overall blah when it comes to Magic the Gathering Finance and Magic the Gathering in general. Well, I thought I at least would release one today, Thursday, in that sort of fashion with the top 10 surrounding a theme. So if I were to do a Market Monday video, I would have done it on the commanders that came out of the Ravnica Legions. Each set, when it is released, there's usually a commander that is popular enough to price to to spike the price of cards that surround it. If we go back to Amonkhet, Hour of Devastation, we've had cards like the Locust God and especially Hapatra. In fact, we started calling it the Hapatra Effect, where a new commander comes out and these old obscure cards, or even not even that old of cards, go crazy because it becomes the kind of the flavor of the week and everyone has a race to get the copies of these cards to play at their local scene. So if people are like me too, I typically try to pick a commander out of each new set and showcase it. I actually built the Haunt of the High Tower for this set and played around that card, but Tesa is much more popular than Haunt of the High Tower. And so for this week, I'm going to pick two cards because they have a lot of overlap, what I like to call the double dipping effect. So Tesa Karlov is by far and away the most uh, popular commander out of Guilds of Ravnica. In fact, it's one of the most popular commanders in a long time that has been released out of a standard set. And usually, the popularity of commanders are coming out of the pre-constructed decks at this rate, at, at, at this level. Tesa, however, is is starting to overshadow and outproduce as far as decklists are concerned, even the Marins and the Breas and the Atraxas. And so, of course, there's just a race to pick up these singles, and it has spiked the value of plenty of cards that are built around Tesa. The other one that I think is a little bit more of a sleeper that may, tends to make a pretty good commander is Judith the Scourge Diva. So they have a lot of overlap because they both deal off of things dying. So, of course, Judith is whenever a non-token creature can go dies, it deals the damage, so it has the Blood Artist effect to it. And Tesa has the uh, double trickling of things that die. So if we come over to cards that already spiked because of Tesa, there have been a lot of them. Mainly from Standard, we've seen cards like the Land of the Dusk Rose, and I'd even put the Seraph of Scales on more. This isn't seeing that much play in Standard. This card has been going up mainly because of Tesa. And even like the Midnight Guard. These are cards that are, are very, or Midnight Reaper, excuse me, not the Midnight Guard. These are cards that are uh, auto includes in the Tesa deck and have gone up a substantial amount of, of money uh, since people have been building the deck. So if we come over here to, to modern, we have the cards like Athreos and even the old Tesa that have just spiked up in value uh, from Tesa. So I think there are some cards that are lagging behind, and that's what we're looking at in this particular episode of the uh, Top 10 Market Monday Recap-ish video. So again, the theme is cards that go both in Tesa Karlov and Judith the Scourge Diva. So Without further ado, let's go on to my honorable mention. So my honorable mention is Gutter Bones. Gutter Bones foils in particular. I like Gutter Bones foils because I think this is going to be the low of the foil. Usually these type of cards, they do flatline out after their draft season and then they start to go up. So Gutter Bones, I think $3 is probably the low for foil. This is more like a $5 or $6 card. This goes in a lot of decks. In if you, It can go in so many decks from a Commander. A lot of casual decks. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the relevant zombie but it does work with skeletons there are some cards that were utilized around skeletons and it does also have that warrior theme to it so i think gutter bones has enough going for it to be recurred there are a lot of infinite combos already with gutter bones by returning it if you have cards like the sifter skull or the piteous plunder and the ashna or the, the frexen altar you can kind of go infinite with a blood artist type effect it's just another one to your arsenal and these type of cards are very very popular in commander what i also like about gutter bones is this is very playable usually one drop Recur recursion based cards uh, have their time in the sun at some point during the standard season so it may not be now uh, there are a few aristocrat type builds some of them using judith uh, that gutter bones does see play in it just doesn't have enough share of the meta to really uh, spike the price of this card at the moment however again i think this is the low for foils you can look at the normal the normals are down to dollar 30 but i actually think that the, the bottom's a little bit lower than dollar 30 for the normals this is a card though i think you do want to pick up as time goes on as they will be a popular card uh, for the foreseeable future it's one of the better uh, cards with uh, the activated ability. It does go back to your hand, not back to your uh, play. So it's a little bit harder to, to, you have to have multiple cards that can generate some mana to produce that infinite combo with like the Blood Arse effects. But it is very, very possible, very easy to to happen in uh, Commander. 
So it's kind of my honorable mention because it's going to take us some time. And usually I don't like to invest in cars that take some time because I think that this bottom will be a month, two months out before it actually starts to go up. But you should be targeting the the, the steal of a deal type cards uh, with gutter boons. Try to pick these up at a buck a piece, I would say, for the foils. And I, I'm sure you can find people to sell them at that price tag. Alrighty, so on to my number 10. This one is Pitiless Plunderer. Now, let me give you a forewarning. I'm the only person that has these up on TC Player at the moment. This is a card that I bought Channel Fireball and Card Kingdom out of stock of these during, I believe it was Dominaria when I targeted these. Dominaria just released. I noticed that Pitiless Plunderer was being used in a ton of Marin decks. And so I hurry and snapped up all the foils for under a dollar. And I have a, a pretty significant amount of inventory of Pitiless Plunderer. They are now up to $5. The buy list is starting to go up on Card Kingdom at $2.50. And again, I'm the only vendor that has them. At least I was when I checked it about an hour ago on TCG Player. Uh, the So that's a good sign for Pitless Plunder about ready to spike for the... Uh, basically... F- because of Tesa and Judith. So if we come over here both on Tesa and Judith, they are both going to be using as their signature card the Pitiless Plunder. So there's the Tesa one and then Judith decks. I don't know if it's on the signature cards, but Judith decks definitely do like the Pitiless Plunder for those recursion type effects of killing your creatures, then getting them back and then generating mana. Uh, and then that's the best way to do it at the moment is through the Pitiless Plunder. So uh, regulars, I still don't think that there's... I think they, they are starting to go up on the regular copies. It is still just an uncommon out of a set that's still in print though. So it's going to take a while for a, a commander casual base card uh, that doesn't see play in standard to really uh, make this card grow. This is standard playable there. There might be some sort of list that can utilize a Pitiless Plunder with, with Judas and Recursion and things like that. But don't, don't get your hopes up for that type of card. We had that sort of effect happened in the the previous standard where pity's plunder was just as good and it just was very very tough for a four job but in in something like casual commander this is an all-star and that going in decks like marin and going in decks like tasa and judith is just icing on the cake for this card to go up that's why i like the foils and i think if you can actually get in on this price i think i have them up at some stupid like price on tsg player but that's usually how i i i i I put things up but they sell they sell if not i find different outlets i typically don't like to sell on tsg player due to the fee structure unless it's really really worth it to do so so again i think the buy list price is going to be increased as i think a lot of these vendors are out of stock for the pity this plunder and i still think it's a pretty good investment at the five dollar tag for a relatively low supply because rivals of ixalan was the least sold set of all the current standard sets maybe m19 possibly rivals of ixalan and there's just not a lot of these out there in circulation on to my number nine. This is a card that there was a lot of these in circulation, but this is another card that just has this lovely trajectory. This is the Smothering Abomination. Another card that has this really good double dipping effect on an aristocrat type build like Judith and a triggers twice off of, of things like Tesa. Well, this one actually doesn't, right? Whenever you sacrifice, you could draw a card. So it doesn't get the double draw card off of it, but you're going to be wanting to kill creatures. So it is a sacrifice outlet as well as getting some value off of when you sacrifice creatures. And if you're running Tesa, it's going to be full of ways to sacrifice creatures and therefore it's going to trigger the smothering abomination it can be a great draw engine uh, through this card so i think getting in these in at around a dollar for the tc market prices is, is still pretty smart card kingdom is has increased their their i bought card kingdom out at under a dollar i believe i think they had them for 79 cents when i bought their foils out and regulars are, are also okay it does seem like there is some movement but if you actually go over here to the market price there's just a ton of of smothering abominations that you can still get around bulk rates uh for it uh battle for zanikar is one of those sets that just has an insane uh, insane amount of inventory it's between battle for zanikar and cons they really just is just it has an overabundance of cards and it's going to take a long time for a rare a rare out of battle for zanikar is like an uncommon out of uh, rivals of ixalan for example all right, on to the next card is the Yeheni Undead uh, Partisan. This, again, is mainly targeting foils, but the I, the I found this interesting that we're down to almost a low, uh, at least in the, the last year-wise. Uh, yeah, it is the low. This is the lowest that Yeheni's been in a year. And this card started to spri- spike at the end of the standard season. It did see some play, but it was mainly that this was the, the, the vampire deck that came out uh, what the 2017 commander deck that really pr- spiked the price? I believe that's what it was. Maybe I'm I'm wrong there. 
of when it, this started to spike up in value. But yeah, Henny is just another great sack outlet for a command. Both commanders want ways to sacrifice their creatures, uh, and it's it's it gets big too in a commander deck. Whenever an opponent, a creature, an opponent control dies, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Both of the the Judith and the Tasa decks are running cards like Grave Pact and the dictate of Erebos. So you're going to be killing your opponent's creatures while you're killing your own creatures. And then Yeheni can also be like a win condition in that type of deck. It's a very good, out of all the cards that kind of have this effect, it's the best one. Uh, we have many of these, like the, the Nantuko uh, Husks. Uh, there's actually a two-drop one vampire as well that, that can get this effect. But this card tends to show up in more and more EDH lists, so I just like it for that reason. I think this is about the low. You see this with rotation happening. Uh, and Aether Revolt, it's it's rotated, and it's about time to go up. I think the foils, though, have never really spiked up in value yet. The foil looks like it's it's near its low right now as well, and you can see there's a little bit of price increase from the Yeheni over the past couple days, and that's just a sign to come. So I really like Yeheni. The card Kingdom 250 uh, buy list price is, is right at this market price, so of course this is going to change pretty soon. So if you can actually find these at the market price, keep in mind you can just get an out on Card Kingdom right now at 250 So that'd be my target price is around $2.50 for Yeheni. All right, on to the next one. This is like a, a, a favorite of mine because I use it in Noth and I use it in Old School Tesa. And this is Sadistic Hypnotist. It's it's insane in both of those decks. It's uh, basically you empty your opponent's hand, all of your opponent's hands with either one of those commanders. Noth by creating elves every time your opponent discards a card. And then it just basically, yeah, and you kill one of your elves, you get two elves back by having your opponent discard their, their cards out of their hand. Tesa, you're hopefully creating a, a way to loop the uh, or at least get enough value to create more uh, spirits that then you can sacrifice. And again, you just empty your opponent's hands. So it's, it's typically gone in those decks. It's another card that's used quite heavily in Marin, which is, I believe, still the second or third most played commander. And the supply of these is actually quite low. If you look at from a dual deck in Odyssey as an uncommon, this is pr pretty much similar to a mythic nowadays. So don't let this, this uncommon fool you from Odyssey. There is very low supply comparatively to cards that exist in nowadays in, in age. We have Card Kingdom paying two bucks for the buy list price, which is, is pretty reasonable compared to a $3.50 market price. And this has been quite steady for a long time now. I think that Sadistic Hypnotist is due for another price spike. These are the type of cards you want to revisit. Anything that already held a price tag like this for a year, two years, that already you know spiked back during Marin, this is due for another price spike. This is just, just how the the, the life of a card cycle works uh, with these low supply older cards. This is another card that might be difficult to print in commander sets, just commander sets, just because of how kind of busted the ability is. They don't really like to have these activated costs that don't require any sort of mana into them, and so I think it's very hard for uh, them to reprint this. I could be proven wrong though. This this could just be an easy shoe in into a a. a uh, uh, commander set. However, I think if this does get some sort of master printing or or reprinting, I think they'll put this as a rare, not as an uncommon, because the ability definitely is rare worthy. So Sadistic Hypnotist, for that reason, I think is a good one to get in at this price point. Two dollars, two dollars and fifty cents, of course, is kind of smart. Just give a little more than Card Kingdom is paying, and you should find some ways to easily be able to buy this card. On to the next one. This one is mainly because of how uh, thin the spread is. Both of the decks of Judith and Taysa are using Sidisi Undead Vizier. It's going to go in every deck. It goes in Marins. It goes in so many decks. Basically, any black deck that I play, it's going to have a Sidisi Undead Vizier in it. So what I like about this, though, is the... Uh, market price is actually higher than the mid, so that's showing that there's huge movement for this card. That means that the the only remaining copies have like ridiculous uh, shipping fees or something like that that keeps the mid uh, lower than the market price. But what I really like is look at this spread between Card Kingdom and the uh, TCG mid market marketplace. It's basically non-existent, and the Card Kingdom is selling it for thirteen dollars. Last time I saw something like this was right before Cyclonic Rift had a huge. Uh, increase in price. Dragon Stark here is old enough to where this card can actually hold some value, and the foil prices are just through the roof already at, at 16 bucks. So I think the normal is going to go up even more. I think this is a 10 to 12 dollars by the time the dust settles from both of the the Tesa and the Judith uh, cards. So if you haven't picked up your CDC uh, copies, I think now is a good time. Um, and yeah, it's 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 a quick easy. Uh, a couple bucks gain if you can get in. You know, of course, at six and get out at 10. That's a decent little profit margin. On to the next one, which is another mainly a foil targeting. 
is the Open the Graves. Open the Graves is at its lowest price now for about the foil. Uh, this is also a card that's included in both of them. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, you create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. And it's another way to just have this sort of infinite fact with the Pitiless Plunders and, and whatnot. Uh, goes in a lot of other commander-based decks. Very, very uh, easy card to break in commander. Very reasonable cost this is not very good for standard or any sort of constructed play but of course a five man enchantment is very playable in the commander set you can target the normals but it's starting to go up there's still a lot of supply of these i wouldn't get in on these for anything you know above bulk even though card kingdom it looks like they are paying 30 cents but this is a card that i did buy some copies at bulk price uh, if you can find them at bulk bins, that's where I get the normals. But for this episode, I'd target the foils. The foils will go up a lot quicker. I think that a buck fifty for foils is just a huge bargain for a card that go up in the graves. This sees a ton of play in Commander. One of the most played cards out of M19, actually, for the Commander set. On to the next one, and this one's a really goodie because there are a lot of rumors for Shadows over Industrad forward format, and this card is included in basically every Taste and Judith deck, and this is Westvale Abbey. Westvale Abbey has that trajectory I like. I don't know what's up with Goldfish, why it's only going back to September uh, 18th for some of these cards, uh, but the price history, you can actually see that this, if you, if you could uh, stretch it back a little bit more, has been steadily going up, and in the past couple weeks, you can see that that uh, has even increased even more to a, a more dramatic increase. So copies are going for about four bucks right now. Market price three fifty, and Card Kingdom again three dollars and twenty five cents. So it's razor razor thin between the buy list price and the TCG market price. That usually indicates that there will be a price spike incoming. If there is a Shadows Forward format, Westville Abbey is a hundred percent guarantee to be a powerhouse in that format. There are so many synergies already. They could use even in standard or standards of the the, the the recent past that would have loved to include Westville Abbey. Just think of like saplings or uh, any sort of history of banalia with Westville Abbey even seems pretty good as it's just a, a great little way to turn all your littler creatures into a big creature. I think that will be going forward a strategy in that Shadows Forward format. Uh, regardless though, this is a powerhouse in Commander. It's very, very difficult to reprint due to the, the uh, flip aspect of it. And yeah, so I love this card for that reason. I think it's a great time to stockpile the Westville Abbey. Probably should be higher up on my list. Yeah, this one I probably should have. Kind of was lazy when I actually structured this list, so don't take these in any sort of succession. Alrighty, on to the number, I believe this is number three. This one is the Dictate of Erebos. This is another one, another card Keenum little seven dollars versus the market price of you know seven eight bucks so this to me looks like it's going to price spike this is a card that is sees playing almost every black commander deck that has any sort of creature based strategy it's a good way to get around the hex proof and indestructible uh in commander and dictated variables journey of the Knicks. it's the one investable uh set of that time period it was by far the least opened in that time period, I even say that Born of the Gods was probably opened up more just because of, of of how robust the scene was until about Journey there was some cooling off and then we had the the huge Cods of Tarkir that had the fetch lands and then the Journey into Nyx just had a very, very low shelf life compared to uh, Born of the Gods and Theros. So as soon as Cons came out, this was out of sight, out of mind. So Dictative Erebos is kind of interesting though because this is in a uh, event deck, I believe. Or it was an event deck or like a intro deck or something like that. I'll have to, I'll have to get the, the the specifics down of which one it was included in. So that one's actually like starting to get interesting to actually buy which event deck that was out of. Maybe it's Dragons of Tarkir event deck. Is the Warriors one. I believe this was in. Anyway, I'll, I'll get that information to you. Uh, one of the things that I do over at my Patreon is I do allow people to buy at distributor price. And I believe that they still have these not only at distribute, like the distributor pricing of these is a huge discount of what these were included in. And it might make sense if there is like multiple copies of Dictative Erebos and if you can sell them out 13 bucks. I think it might be reasonable. We'll look at that. I'll actually see if that's actually something that's feasible because I do believe this was in some sort of very, very bargain bin uh uh, sealed product that you can still get for very, very cheap. So I'll get back to you on that. So Dictative Erebos though, this, this again, I try to look for these type of scenarios where Card Kingdom is paying for a very uh, little bit less than the TC market price. So again, this is why I like buy listing uh, over selling. If you were to try to sell this card right now on TC market price, you'd actually make out less than selling to, to Card Kingdom. But that's another story for another day, another discussion for another day. On to the next one. This is Pawn of Ulmog Foils in particular because it's another one that has been 
a little bit stagnant for a while, but I think it's due to start increasing again. This has only seen play uh, printings in the Commander and the Dual deck, so n these both didn't have foils enter into the mix. The Dual decks, this one was opened a lot because this had the the, the Eldrazi lands in them. Uh, however, I think the, the normals will start to increase with the Pond of Ulamogs. Uh, Commander 2017 wasn't that far off, but you can already, already see this is actually spiked up. Sometimes these are the first ones to spike up in value because they're the most recent. So when you actually search these at a particular website, these ones will come up first and the people that are too lazy to scroll through. Believe it or not, this happens all the time. And it's very, very, this this is very common for commander cards so the most recent one just to go up in value before the other ones do because people are so lazy they can't click through to be like oh there's another version of this that i can actually buy this from but that's besides the point uh i don't really like the normals because it's just you know it's too low for my my blood for a uh, car that's easily reprinted the thing is the foils i don't know if this will get another foiling printing if it's just going to continue to be printed in like commander sets so foils are where it's at with this particular card i think five dollars a bargain this could easily have a double up there we go there's a better that's all i have to do now that's actually uh, there's the there's the price trajectory very good one for the pond of Ulamog. if you actually follow this a year ago it was what it was three dollars so it's gone up a year a dollar in a year uh, from the Pond of Ulamog, and I think the taste is just going to sp uh, uh, spike it up even more. Last but not least, another foil that I absolutely love is the Sifter of Skulls. Do I just need to reload this? Is it? There we go. For a reason, MT Goldfish wasn't showing this where we could actually go back into a time. Sifter of Skulls, still at the all-time low. People forget this is just this is another Pitiless Plunderer type card, uh, another Pond of Ulamog type card. Yes, out of Ulf the Gatewash. Yes, this was opened up like crazy. I can't remember if this was in some sort of supplemental product. We'll have to check and see. However, Sifter of Skulls, though, foil uh, is, is definitely something that is like, look at the cost between the foil and the normal. The normal's already gone up to 40 cents. And I mean, it's really kind of stayed there this entire time. And the foil is, you know, 77 cents. It looks like Card Kingdom is actually, you know, they're actually only only selling it for 79 cents. So there must be a lot of these in existence. It must be because this 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 exists outside. This might be in, it might be like the intro pack foil, or or whatnot. I'll have to check in on that. But I still like it because after looking through the the list, this was included in both of them. And it's just another way to achieve those infinite combos. The more of these type of commanders that are printed, the more of these type of cards are going to be used in it uh, that produce mana every time something, you know, dies. And then it actually puts out a 1-1 one, one that you can then sacrifice for mana or just have in another way to enable some sort of other effect. Again, both of these do not work off of tokens, right? Does Tesa... Tesa work off dying effects with tokens whenever a creature dying causes a trigger ability to permanently control that. Yep, it actually does trigger with a, and gives a creature tokens life link and vigilance. Uh, it doesn't trigger off the Judith, but uh, it still triggers off the cards that are dying off of Judith. So that's kind of the cards that I like. There's a huge theme to this, like the Sifter of Skulls, the Pitiless Plunder, and the the Pond of Ulamog are all type, are all the same type of card, but they they do seem to be used all three of them in various decks that do want them. And there are plenty of them uh, throughout the, the history of Commander. I think they're all pretty low at the moment, especially their foil versions, uh, that they will start to go up in price. So that's kind of my 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 top 10 list with an honorable mention of the Gutter Bones uh, this week. We'll get back to the regular content. Like I said, I've just been kind of foggy. It's hard to create content when your brain's just not... Uh, working properly, kind of foggy, kind of just out of sorts at the moment. We'll get back to Rogue Market content, uh, picking things. I, I need to bring back the uh, Rogue Roundup. Those just are a little more intense on the editing. And trust me, when when your mind isn't just uh, f functioning properly, it's, it's tough to formulate sentences. And then editing is a whole nother uh, can of worms. And it's just, uh, need the motivation, need to get back in, in the sorts of things. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. This has been Kevin with the Rogue Market. Thanks for watching.